So in order to do dormant grafting, we need dormant scions. Dormant scions are harvested in the winter time after all the fall leaves have fallen off, but before the buds start to swell in the spring or very, very late winter. So usually that's gonna be in January and February, depending on where you live. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take those dormant cuttings that are nice and asleep. They haven't got sap flowing through them yet. The buds have not begun to swell. And we're gonna put them in the fridge and try to hold them that way until we can graft. And that's what we mean when we say dormant grafting is that we're using dormant wood. So it's cut, store, graft. Typically the best wood to cut is last year's shoots. So from here to here, from right here to right there, from right here to right there. So for instance, right here is where I cut this bud, this shoot off last year. Right here is where I cut this one off last year. And so this is the new growth. And you'll be able to tell because this wood will look all fresh and smooth and clean. And then when you get down to a certain point, you'll see a little bump here and then a change and this bark will look a little bit different. So typically, if you have them available, you're going to get these nice long shoots. This, these are just great right here. I would probably be selecting generally this stuff right here about in the middle. It's very mature, like it's hardened off well. Um, it's a good diameter for grafting. Typically, it's got pretty good spaces between the buds, which gives you a lot of space for making a cut for grafting. Now, if we go up here, I can see a place where the shoot stopped growing somewhere in the summer and then it started again and grew this. So this part is kind of hairy and angular and it just doesn't have the rigidity and maturity of this wood down here. It's kind of a little bit, I don't know, just weak feeling. And you can graft with this wood. I mean, a lot of times you just have to graft with whatever you can get. But if I was being selective with this shoot, I'm gonna take my clippers and just get rid of this part, which is kind of that like late second growth and just keep the rest of that. So I can just take this, cut it into two or three pieces, store that in a bag in the fridge and it'll be ready to graft whenever I'm ready or I'll send it to someone else in the mail. Now, like I said, a lot of times you're not gonna get what you want. You're not gonna get these nice long shoots. I mean, on my farm here, this is exceptional because we have, you know, really dry long summers and we typically just don't get this kind of vigorous growth on most of my trees. So for instance, here's a shoot that was grown last year as well. And sometimes this is all you're gonna be able to get is this little, little scion. So the things to look for are ones that are more mature, like this still feels pretty mature. It's like rigid and um, pretty smooth. So I would have no problem grafting with this and any skilled grafter could you know, pull off the graft with this just fine. It's just not the ideal thing that you wanna cut. If possible, you wanna get stuff that's a little bit bigger with longer spaces between the buds. I had to harvest some scions this year for a friend that are probably two, maybe three inches long and they're just really stubby with tons of little buds on them. But those were the best scions on the tree because it just is a really unvigorous variety. It's crowded in a bunch of other varieties and it bore a bunch of fruit. So there just wasn't much to cut and he'd probably rather have those stubby little scions than no scions at all. And if he, his skills as a grafter are reasonable, it's almost sure that they'll take anyway. If you have to, you can often get away with uh, grafting wood that's more than one year old. Uh, it, try to get the youngest wood that you can, the smoothest wood. Try to get pieces that look like they have dormant buds on them and not a lot of fruit buds. So fruit buds are these little stubby pointy things here and those can grow shoots but typically what they'll do is they'll, if you graft those, they'll flower and if you pick off the flowers, they might grow a shoot and they might not. Or they may sit there and he the graft might heal and it'll grow just a couple of leaves where the blossoms were. And then if you're lucky next year, it'll, it'll grow a shoot. But again, sometimes you just have to take what you can get. All right, so let's go look at the different hows and whys of storing and shipping scions because that's also very important. We have to keep this wood in good shape and dormant until we're ready to use it. And we wanna be able to get these through storage uh, dormant until it's time to graft then we graft it the graft heals and then the scion will start to finally receive some nutrients and water from the stock and then grow so usually you're going to store these in the refrigerator 
If you have to storm outside, storm in a very cool place, the garage floor, the north side of a barn outside, or of a house, and you can pack them in damp sawdust. I mean, people used to do this before there was plastic bags and refrigerators, so there's ways to do it. But these days, typically, most people are going to harvest, store them in the refrigerator in plastic to keep them from drying out, and then graft them whenever it's time. We don't want them to dry out, but we also don't want them to drown. So here's the, the problems that they will encounter. Um, if they get too warm, they'll start to sprout. If they're not sealed well enough and the, the uh, environment where they're sealed is not a very high humidity, like about 100%, they're going to begin to dry out. So you can't just toss them in the fridge. You need to wrap them in plastic or damp sawdust or something like that. They will also rot or mold if they have water standing against them all the time, or they can anyway. So if you put a whole bunch of water in the bag and they're sitting against a, in a plastic bag against some water, they could begin to uh, rot and drown there because there's no air circulation. If you combine heat and water like that, then you're really in trouble and decay can happen much faster. You'll get mold growth and stuff like that. The other thing that happens is that the substrate that people use to hold water, usually paper, will begin to rot and mold. Now this, the, you can see there's some sawdust here and this sawdust doesn't really mold easily at all. Like I can keep this in the fridge for a year and there and really nothing's gonna grow on it. And these shavings are not wet, they're damp. So they act as kind of a reservoir. They keep the moisture in the bag at 100% humidity, but the scions against them aren't sitting against a really anything really wet. There's not standing water anywhere and air is still can, can move through the shavings, you know. So paper is kind of a bad idea. I just avoid it completely if possible. I'll often get scions in the mail from people that are wrapped in like a wet paper towel or something like that. First thing I do is take that out, throw it away, dry the scions off completely, dry the bag out, put them back in, seal it up, and put it in the fridge. If I have some damp sawdust handy, I might throw that in as well. It certainly doesn't hurt. But if you're grafting within a month or two for apples and pears, it's probably not going to be a problem. And as long as the bag is sealed, like if you have a good Ziploc bag, put the scions in the bag. Kind of roll it up, you know, and press the air out and then store it like this. Don't store it just in the fridge like this with a bunch of air in the bag. Now the sawdust is great for scions that dry out really easy, like peach, almond, and nectarine come to mind as the ones that, that I know of that dry out the easiest. And you should graft those as soon as possible or store them really carefully. Also, if you need to store those scions for a long time, like walnuts, um, here we graft them in June, maybe you know June 1st or so, it just depends. Like the, the tree is either ready or it's not. When the tree is ready, you, you graft, but it's very late. So that means they need to be held over for a long time. And that's what Alex Sushan, the walnut grafting expert, I think he has a video on YouTube actually, or there's a video of him doing walnut grafting. It should be really good. Um, does and he told me like don't you know always put the damp shavings in there because you have to hold these things for a really long time and I think really the worst thing you can do is take the scions wrap them in something really really wet like so there's a bunch of loose water in there pack them in the mail and send them snail mail to somebody because they're gonna get warm and you know I've had mold growing on the paper by the time they even got to me. You know, it's like newspaper or paper towel or something like that. As an example, I recently received these scions in the mail and they're wrapped in a, a damp paper towel. With quite a bit of water, you can see the moisture inside the bag and there's already mold growing on this paper. Now there was, even sitting for a year, there was no mold in that bag with that um, scion I just grafted. But in here you can already see the, the mold starting to grow on the paper. Now this is a situation that you see a lot. <clears throat> when uh, stuff gets shipped in the mail, it gets warm and it, it'll start to grow. Or maybe the scions were harvested a little bit late and you get these things where the buds are starting to uh, shoot out. So what you want to do with that is you just find the, the pieces with the most dormant buds. So this one down here low on the stem the buds are basically all dormant. Even up high, they're, they're fairly dormant, but a lot of times it'll be the ones at the base, like at the base of this shoot, looks really good all the way up to here. So I would just choose that portion. 
if it gets down to even one single bud that's not you know shooting out then just pick everything else off and use that one or at the most use one other one that's starting to elongate and show green you can get away with uh, grafting buds that are showing green sometimes but it definitely reduces your chances because as soon as this green starts to really break out it's going to start losing moisture really quick and transpiring just like a, any normal leaf does so um, you really want to get the, the most dormant buds that you can and sometimes it's pretty dicey you know you can just barely get something i really think for shipping uh, you really don't need anything or just some damp sawdust is good like when i send scions out i'll just sprinkle a little bit of this in the with the scion and that's good enough if you get very wet scions do like i said and, and get them all dried off if you want add some damp shavings and put them away some people will seal the ends. It's another good thing to do if you're going to keep the scions for a long time. It certainly doesn't hurt. If it was really easy to do, I would probably do it, maybe. Um, but it's just another thing to do that I don't, I don't think is usually necessary. Again, with apples. It depends on where they're going, how long they're going to be around. I mean, ideally, the whole thing would be dipped in paraffin and, and completely coated in paraffin, and that would be ideal. You could also just use some white, like Elmer's glue on the ends or some latex paint or something like that. And finally, you can rehydrate them if they get a little dry, and if, or if you're just not sure, it never hurts to rehydrate. Just take the scions, cut off the end, drop them in a glass of water in the fridge overnight, and they'll plump right up. This is a scion that was cut over a year ago, and it's been stored in a plastic bag in the fridge without anything. No water, no sawdust, no damp paper towels, no nothing and it is very dried up. Can you see how desiccated and like wrinkled and dry it looks? However, if we look up here at the top where I scratched it, you can see there's still some green in there and it's definitely still alive. So what we're gonna do is snip off this butt end right here and soak it in water until it plumps back up. And I hope you can get a pretty good idea of how dried up it is. Um, you see those longitudinal lines in it? So I'll put this in the fridge and leave it until tomorrow, probably. Okay, here's that same scion several days later. It perked up right away. It really plumped up a lot. It looks fairly fresh now. Anyway, I'm going to graph this and we'll see if it takes.